And remember what I told you. Yeah, yeah, don't make eye contact. He takes it as a personal challenge. Hello? Pat? Yes? Can I get a, uh... He'll take a Raspberry Pi 3. Ka -ka! No pie for you! <laughs> told you. Hey, but I did hear this new deli. I can go pick up the sandwiches. No. Oh. Don't be held hostage by the board. Go to digikey.com to find thousands of boards in stock, all ready for immediate shipment. Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of Make Live. Um, I'm Tyler Weingartner and today we are going to be building Eddie. Uh, Eddie is a self-balancing robot that you can remote control from your computer. Uh, if you're not familiar with Make Live, this is a live project build series um, uh, brought to you by Make Magazine and by DigiKey. And uh, we're going to be doing this every month where we take a project for, from the pages of Make Magazine and build it right in front of you. Um, now, there's a couple of lessons we learned from the last one where we got really bogged down with things like eh, really intricate soldering, and this is another project that involves a lot of intricate soldering. So I've actually taken the time to go ahead and do those steps ahead of time, but don't worry, you'll be walking through all the steps that you need to do to build this project, and um, we'll have plenty of details, and also you can see how this entire project comes together both in Make Magazine and on makezine.com. Um, but first of all, we want to thank DigiKey for making this, uh, this series and this show possible. If you're not familiar with who they are, they're a wonderful and thorough supplier of electronic components. Everything from boards and Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and single board computers that you need to build projects, all the way down to the minutiae of electronic components like resistors and capacitors and transistors uh, to make the tiny little fiddly parts of your, your project work as well. And you can buy everything from all these components and order them, uh, get them delivered straight to your door uh, by ordering it at digikey.com. So first of all, we want to thank them for making this series possible. Uh, before we get right into this project and this build, uh, which this one's a lot of fun. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the robot built right here in front of me, but I do have a video of what it's gonna look like when we're, when we're done. Started building it, so I don't think you should wait any longer either. So let's get going into this. Okay, so uh, we have all the components that you see here, um, and the really key part of this that we want to highlight here is the Intel Edison. Uh, this is the single board computer that makes this entire project possible. This is the entire brains of Eddie. Uh, if you're familiar with, uh, or if you caught the last episode where we built the Pixie GIF camera with the Raspberry Pi Zero, that was a computer that's a little bit bigger than this by like, me, yeah, maybe this, you see where I'm measuring with my finger, about that much wider. Um, but what's missing from the Intel Edison is all, a lot of the things that make it easy to use as a computer. Uh, as you can see, there's really no easy input and outputs. All you really have is on the bottom of this board, you have this connector here. And that will work with all these other boards that you see here that they connect together to kind of give you all those inputs and outputs. But otherwise, um, this is what you would use in application. You would call this like a headless application where you power the computer on, it runs on its own, you can connect to it via Wi-Fi or over the internet or any other means. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you're not going to be like plugging a, a monitor and keyboard into this to interface with it directly. Um, the body of Eddie is 3D printed. Um, this is the main body here and where we're going to be attaching all the rest of the components here using these, uh, these brass standoffs. 
Um, what else to show you here? He's got, he's got a cute head. Uh, we'll attach that later on. No actual brains in this head. Uh, just uh, something that looks cool and, and gives, gives the guy a whole lot of character. Um, but I think that really the first thing we should do is just start stacking all these components together. Like I said, everything is pretty much going to be attached to this base frame here. And then, uh, then we kind of work out from there. And uh, one of the first things I want to do is attach, actually the first thing we need to do is put the battery on. This is a battery, it's a, a little LiPo battery board uh, that we're going to attach onto here. Uh, it's a 400 milliamp hour battery. Um, and it will provide Eddie with about an hour's worth of power as I understand it. Pardon me while I sling screwdriver bits all over the place. And of course, if you have any questions about this build, um, I built it a few times and I've managed to gain a little bit of knowledge and insight into it. Um, and I'm hoping that the creator, Renee, might be in the chat. But either way, if you have any questions um, uh, about this build, go ahead and fire away and uh, we'll answer as best we can. This battery board is a bit of a tight fit. The first one there to kind of get it in and get it registered will... There we go. That should make all the others a lot easier. And you might notice on the logo on the back here is SparkFun. SparkFun is the manufacturer of these boards. They're really like accessory boards uh, for the Intel Edison. They're made by SparkFun, another um, manufacturer of, of uh, electro electronic components. They do some distribution, but uh, not quite on the scale as, uh, as DigiKey. They're, they're good partners to each other and to us as well. There we go, we've got all the brass standoffs there. The battery block is being held in place. Um, right here, there's this uh, on-off switch. Of course, that's how we'll be uh, powering Eddie on. Flick that on, you see the blue LED there, but uh, we don't want to waste the battery there. So the next thing we need to do is add, well, let's go over the motor assembly here that I've already created. Uh, so here are the two motors um, that Eddie moves about with. Um, these are just standard DC motors. Uh, they're geared down so that you know when they, uh, you turn them, uh, they give you a little bit more control. Uh, and what's special about these motors that have all this fine soldering, well, I shouldn't call it fine soldering work, it's soldering work that I did. Um, but there's these two boards on the, or these boards on the back of each motor called encoders. See, normally DC motors are really, really simple. You give them voltage one direction, they turn that way. They give them, uh, you give them voltage in the other direction, they turn the other way. Really simple. But the tricky thing about working with um, DC motors is you don't get any feedback from them. And that's where the encoders come in. And let's um, see if I can get something to help get the camera to focus on that a little bit better. I apologize for that picture. Okay, that's looking better. So what these encoders do is they have this magnet here that turns as the motor does. The encoder is able to detect the sensor or the, the rotation of the motor and give feedback back to the computer. And this is what helps um, the, the Edison determine where, uh, what position the motor is in and where it needs to turn and how far it needs to turn to be able to have Eddie regain his balance. And those are all wired into this, uh, which is the, the GPIO block. Uh, GPIO means uh, that um, general purpose input and output. And this is what lets you attach the wire up these components uh, so that the Edison can interact with them. And the other board that these are also wired into is an H-bridge. An H-bridge is a very, very popular component in robotics 
And the reason why they're important is they allow you to really simplify uh, the way you drive a DC motor. Um, normally, you know, in a circuit, well, as I mentioned, you, you supply voltage in one direction and it turns one way, and if you supply voltage in the other direction, you know, you can reverse polar polarity and all that happens is you, um, you reverse the direction of the motor. And an H bridge makes it simple where if you just supply voltage to one of the pins on here, it will uh, turn, turn the motor in one way and supply voltage to another pin, and it'll turn it the other way, and it'll just automatically reverse that for you. Uh, so it just simplifies a lot of your circuit design. Okay, so that's all that stuff. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and attach these to the main body frame here. I should also mention that I'm joined in the room here by Mike Sinisi, the uh, executive editor of Make Magazine. In case I run into, need a tool or something like that, one of the little things that caught me up last time, I'm sure he'll also be heckling me throughout the show too, just in case uh, somebody has a good question and I, I didn't catch it. Uh, Fernando is asking, there's going to be a tutorial blog post for it, and uh, yes, yes there is. In fact, yes there already is. Um, and I'm posting that right now. Uh, Mike is sharing that in the, so this is already online, it's already in Make Magazine, uh, and of course this video uh, will be posted along later on, so you, you don't need all the components right at this moment to be building this project with us. But if you do, that would be awesome. but totally not necessary. Plenty of opportunities to learn how you can build this guy later on. All right, so we have these um, motors locked in underneath these motor covers, and now we can uh, go about just um, attaching the rest of these boards uh, to the rest of the frame here. Uh, and these boards, they, I mentioned that, uh, that little connection block. These, so these just snap together. And then we just add the standoffs or screws, depending on where you are in assembling this thing. And they all just snap together. Well, the, uh, the screws help it uh, securely go together after you've uh, made, the, uh, made the interface connection. So the next two components that we will be attaching here are the, um, as I mentioned already, the GPIO block and the, um, the H-bridge block. And you'll notice also here on the H-bridge, I've got a little bit of electrical tape here, and that's because there's these solder connections underneath there. And the next block that we put on is the, the base block that you would normally attach the Edison directly to uh, so, you can get, so you can power the board, um, have a, a serial console inter interface to it, and things like that. Um, but when you put the two together, there is a very good chance that you could create a short from the, uh, the USB ports 
on the base block. And so that little bit of electrical tape just gives us a little, little bit of insulation uh, to help protect against that. Because that can cause a whole lot of nasty problems for you. All right, and I mentioned already the base block. That's this guy right here. Wait for the camera to focus up on it. Uh, not much to see on this side, uh, but yeah, there's just all this um, uh, all this componentry that lets you interface directly with the Intel Edison. Uh, normally, we you would attach the Intel Edison directly to this. It has these two USB ports that let you uh, have a serial interface to it and a USB on the go port that will also let you, if you really wanted to, attach a keyboard or other interface device directly to it. Uh, but we're not going to be doing either of those. And the Edison itself is attached to another board. Um, I'll talk about in just a moment after I get this guy attached. I can make sure that all those look like they're all making good connections there. It looks like they are. I was getting a little bit worried because I was feeling like I was fighting the uh, screws and the, the brass standoffs there a little bit. Uh, so it's always good to check your work. And as I mentioned, this is where we actually have the Edison uh, single board computer attached. Uh, this is on this, uh, well, you can only see it there as this 9DOF or 9 degrees of freedom block. Um, for that to focus in there. Yeah, my finger in the frame there will help. Take the background away. Come on, camera. We'll just come to it. So the nine degrees of freedom block, well, it's what's called an IMU or an inertial measurement unit. Um, this is the sort of thing that you have on your quadcopter or, um, and it, it contains a number of sensors that basically help things like robots determine where they are in the world. Uh, so it's got accelerometers and magnetometers and, um, you know, basically things that help, um, you know, determine, you know, motion, you know, relative to itself. And this is all the, 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 uh, inter the hardware interface that, feeds information back to the Edison uh, along with those encoders to help it determine how much it's uh, started to tip over and how much it needs to move the motors uh, in order to regain balance. And it is the last component that we will be attaching to Eddie here today. Hardware component, that is. Still doesn't look much like a robot, it's just this kind of weird frame. We're going to fix that all in just a moment. Like that project screwdriver? Uh, the screwdriver I'm using here? Yeah. Um, I like it quite a bit. 
Uh, this is um, one of the iFixit screwdrivers. Um, and yeah, it's just, I, I, can't, I can't remember the number of what this kit is called. I bet it would tell me if I looked at the cover for a second. Um, I think it might be their Pro Screwdriver kit. Not their full, like, although as I'm talking about it and trying to get this screw threaded in, I'm having a hilariously bad time of it. Um, but no, in general, I like it quite a lot. I think that the bits are of really, really good quality, um, especially for the price. Um, if you get in, and you know, they're all magnetic. They they fit together really well. They don't fall out. Um, and sometimes you need. Sometimes it's not easiest to get a whole lot of torque. Uh, you can always use this hole to get a little bit of, of uh, a little bit more torque through there. But I would caution against putting too much torque. On it, if I can find the bit here, and hopefully we'll be able to see this. Hopefully we get this focused in. I don't know if we can see this, but um, that is a tiny hex or a, hel a tiny Allen key. I think it's a 1.5 millimeter. This is actually twisted, uh, so don't put too much torque on these bits. They're they're not they're not faultless, but uh, in general, I like this kit quite a lot. Okay, so Eddie is built for the most part. Um, there's a couple other things that we need to do to turn him into a, a real robot. Uh, first thing is um, give him arms. I was going to attach his wheels first and I realized that would probably be making my life a little bit harder than it needs to be. His arms are also 3D printed and they just go in with these M3 screws, M2.5 or M3 Allen screws, one of those two. How much do you for the printed parts? Is that PLA, ABS? Uh, the printed parts are entirely PLA. Um, again, I think as I mentioned last time with the Pixie camera, which is also 3D printed, um, anytime I'm worried about dimensional accuracy as far as parts fitting together and parts fitting with other things like screws, uh, I really like PLA um, because it, it holds its dimensions a lot better than ABS is. Um, PLA is harder to finish than ABS. Um, you know, it doesn't sand quite as well. Uh, although people are developing good techniques for it. I mean, I know that uh, Bob Claggett of I Like to Make Stuff is doing a lot of uh, prop replica stuff lately, uh, making his like Star Wars Shore Trooper helmet. He printed that entirely with PLA and came up with a gorgeous finish. Um, I believe what he does is adds a, what he calls it, or what is called, um, a sanding primer, or no, a filling primer, and he is able to fill that and that fills in the, the cracks um, between the print lines and then gives him a surface that he can sand later. So it's like a Bondo. A, a bit like a Bondo, like a micro Bondo. But in general, I like PLA, printing in PLA anytime I would need to worry about parts fitting together. Um, and it used to have a, a reputation for being brittle. And I feel like maybe that was um, a bit, bit of an unkind uh, representation of it, or maybe the material science of PLA, of modern PLA, is just better than old PLA. Uh, I'm not really sure the answer there. Uh, that is a question I will put to uh, our digital fabrication editor, Matt Stultz. I'm tempted right. to throw out a conspiracy theory of the International ABS Consortium. You think they're, think they're uh, sleeping on the job? I think they're trying to um, discredit PLA. Ah. Oh, I see. Matt would be a, a, good, a good source for some information about that. All right. So now he's got his wheels, he's got his arms. 
Uh, last thing we really need to do is add the head and that, um, well, I'll talk a little bit about the head here. Mo mostly this is just a 3D printed part. Um, you see there's this thread or this um, screw that I managed to thread into here. And that's a good technique for people to know. Um, there we go. Now it's focusing in. So all I did here is there was already this hole printed in here. And all I did was I took a, um, uh, an M3 screw. I uh, added a little bit of a, a nut to it to give it a little bit more security there. And then I pressed it against the hole while uh, holding a soldering iron to it. And what that does is it allows the heat from the soldering iron to transfer into the plastic, melt it, and then I could press it into the hole and then the soldering iron, um, the heat from that, the plastic melted around it, and now it's really securely in place. So in case you ever need to embed uh, threaded hardware into your 3D printed parts, um, that's a cool way to do it. Uh, you can buy all kinds of uh, threaded inserts that, um, you know, normally they might originally be intended to go into wood. You can add uh, brass threaded inserts into your 3D printed parts. If you're like building an enclosure or anything that you want to attach with screws, um, that is a really, really wonderful way to do it. Um, in this case here, we're just threading it straight into the plastic. Oh, this isn't a load-bearing part, so it's, it's just his head. All right, so we've got all that put together. Last uh, few things here are just some cosmetic things. Uh, there's this uh, cover uh, that just kind of covers up his components in the back. It's a bit of a tight fit, especially when I kink the wires. Eh. Have these wires a little bit misaligned here. And the last part is this would just covers up the wiring underneath, um, which we probably don't need today because he's staying uh, here in our lab environment. But if you want to drive Eddie around outside, it helps keep dirt out of the encoders and things like that. All right, so for the next part, we are going to be uh, powering up the Edison so that we can do the programming for it. Leave him on his back here. That guy's looped on this, but oh. I think I think we'll be all right. And let's see. Come back here and get my computer out. All right, so now we are, see if this uh, Edison is booted yet. It has, and I need to do a quick tweak. Uh, funny thing about SSH, if you reinstall the operating system on a computer that you are trying to connect to, um, it will still get upset about the fact that you are trying to connect to it when it has um, a security key from another build of that operating system uh, at the same IP address. So I need to modify my host file really quick. All right, now that should work. Okay, 
Now, it might not look like it, but uh, I am now connected directly to Eddie, um, running this, uh, I believe it's a, a Debian-based version of Linux here. And the first thing I need to do is I need to add a couple of lines to the, um, the OPKG um, file, just so it knows where to get some of the package components that we'll need to install. And Actually, uh, making all these additions uh, by typing it in by hand, comparing against the the text in the magazine. If I was uh, if I planned a little bit more ahead, I would have had these ready to copy and paste into here. So just double checking to make sure I don't fat finger anything. That's all good. And then we just need to do uh, two quick update programs. Uh, one is and this is just a quick uh, update script for the, uh, the current OS on the, on the Edison. But this is a pretty fresh install of the OS. I only did it yesterday. So it should be pretty up to date. And then we need to install Git. And now Git's already installed. Then now we just need to grab the GitHub repo for Eddie. balance.get All right, and then need to compile. If build comes back with no errors. That means we um, We've done our job right. OK, so here's the fun part is um, run the Eddie Balance program. And once that loads up, we should be. All right, and that's, that's running. It's hard to see at the moment here. I'm going to switch him over to battery power. Disconnect this USB cord. All 
All right, something. Okay, we get to do a little bit of live troubleshooting. Because um, what's happening here is that he's trying to balance, but for some reason, um, only one motor is turning, uh, which is why he's not balancing very well right now. So I'm going to assume that maybe I may have tweaked a wire when I attach that motor cover. First things first, let's get go back to the code, the one where we can see what's going on. Let's go full screen now. Let's get the computer out of the way. We don't need it anymore. All right, and I'm going to, well, we may need the computer. I may need to. Boot Eddie, or reboot Eddie, and I haven't set up the script yet to run without, or to run automatically on boot. Okay, so it's this left motor. Tyler, once it's programmed, should you be able to get the connections reset and it kick right in? Um, and I don't think they can hear me too well without my mic either. So. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what was the question again? Now that it's programmed, yes. if you wiggle the wires back into place, assuming that's what it is, it should kick right back in, right? It should, yeah. This is def uh, So the question was, uh, essentially, is this a hardware or a software issue? And it's definitely a, um, it's a, definitely a hardware issue. Because um, when I, the, the mo you know, I definitely feel like the motor is engaged. Um, uh, because when the, when, they're mo when the motors don't have any power going to them, um, they're, you can actually turn them pretty easily by hand. Um, in fact, one of the first things we're going to do is, uh, Make sure I have enough slack here. So I'm just going to, I should probably just dis uh, detach the motor entirely. Maybe I shouldn't be quite so brave with these connections that I should power Eddie off. But you see what I was meaning or was talking about just a moment ago here, that it's pretty easy to turn these motors by hand. And these connections all still look good. Um, my soldering job still does not. So everything is as one, as, as I expect it should be. Again, I'm worried about the interface. The, if the motors are, if the encoders, because they're driven by magnets, I wonder if they might be getting a little bit of crosstalk. Um, 
So what I will need to do is I will need to reconnect to Eddie, and I will need to reboot that script. All right, so I'm going to reboot Eddie here. And remember how I said, ah, computer, won't need that anymore. Let's see what we got here now. And there we go. All right, see, let's get a little bit of a better view of Eddie and what he can do other than get tripped up by camera cords. So as you see there, he is already self-balancing. And like I said, you can poke at him, prod at him, and he can pretty easily uh, maintain his balance. Um, and as I mentioned already, you can also control him remotely. And I don't want to move him too back, back too far, because that's an easy way to make him fall off the cliff, and we don't want that. Uh, but you know, he just controls with. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, computer games, he just steers around using uh, the standard WASD control scheme. And here's the other fun thing that I realized just a while ago: is he can actually carry a decent amount of stuff. I mean, I'm not going to have him carry this hammer back here, and. Uh, you know, he's got to adjust for it, but you know, here he's holding this screwdriver. And you know, he still can drive around and carry stuff. And, <clears throat> and you know, like I said, this is this is kind of what Eddie does. You know, he balances, you can drive him around, you can give him a, a, a mic brought in another thing. Whoa. It's close as I could find to a can of beer. Per Fair Don enough. For Donald's question. I may, a beer would be tough just because his arms aren't very big. Let's see what we can do here. Also, I don't, I think I've, whoa. 
Yeah, I don't. I think I've stripped out the mounting hole of this of his left arm here, uh, and it just it doesn't support a whole lot of tension. Uh, let me see if I can get that attached here because I'm intrigued by this. And it wouldn't be it wouldn't be able to be a very big beer. Maybe one of those little um, the coronitas. Is that what they're called? They're really the yeah. like six ounce coronas. That's exactly what he's looking for. Ah. Oh. All right, maybe I have that with enough tension on. I don't think it is. Uh, All right, so Donald, your challenge is to build this, but to do it with those threaded inserts I was telling you about uh, so they can hold a beer. So you do that, you get enough tension in there. Yeah, that, that arm's pretty much completely stripped out. So I'm going to leave him, whoa. Holding the question about, uh, just get in there. Okay. Uh, so once again, I mean, this is uh, this really cool project that. Uh, was designed for us by Renee Galinsky. Um, she's a roboticist uh, based out of, which, where is she in? Where is she at in Texas? Houston. Houston. Um, you can, if you pick up uh, Make Magazine Volume 45, you'll get full instructions for this and her other robot, which is called Chippy, uh, which is 54. 54. Um, I thought it was the robots issue. 45, you said. Uh, I said 55. 55. Yeah. 45. Okay. Okay. No worries. Uh, the one with the robot on the cover. The, the robots. Uh, which is another one of her projects. That one is called Chippy. Um, she actually sells that as a kit. It's an a Arduino, entirely Arduino based. So it's a little bit simpler to put together than this. Uh, you don't have to deal with all that code stuff other than uh, programming the Arduino. Um, and it's 3D printed and you can control it with a, a remote controller, uh, kind of like an Xbox or any other kind of game controller. Um, otherwise, I, I cannot thank enough DigiKey for making this series possible making it a, a super easy place to get all the parts we need to build projects like this. Uh, well, other than the 3D printed parts, but we can do those are on our own. And who knows, maybe in the future they will add a 3D printing service, but um, we'll, we'll see if they do. Uh, but otherwise, you can get all the parts needed to build this project uh, from them. Uh, they're a wonderful partner, and we're super thrilled to have them on board. And we are thr super thrilled to see you next time on Make Live, uh, where we're going to be doing another project that I am super excited about. We're going to build a cell phone, a working cell phone. And I want you to be able to call me live once it's done being built. So look forward to that. That'll be happening sometime in March. Uh, in the meantime, once again, I'm Tyler Weingartner. Uh, you can find more about this project and all of our projects on Make Magazine online at makezine.com. You can get all the, con all the uh, components you need to build those projects at digikey.com. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Just need a TI launch pad. Can't you see I'm busy here? Don't, Don't be held hostage by the board order. Go to digikey.com to find thousands of boards in stock all ready for immediate shipping.